Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Welcome back for the second half of our Weekend Warrior Sunday doubleheader. This time pitting our Spec Racer Ford drivers against the monster that is the Nord Slife. 14 miles or 22 kilometers, uh, over 75-ish turns. It is, in my opinion, the truest test of a driver, either in real life or in the simulator. Fortunately for our drivers, weather will not play a factor in today's race as the SRFs have not been uh, rain enabled, but that doesn't mean that the race won't have drama. When we, when we raced here last, a couple of seasons ago, we saw Marco Panero jump out to a commanding lead, only to have a miscalculation on his fuel and having to give up several seconds of time to a large pack of drivers in the final lap, but able to hold on for the race victory. What kind of drama will we see today? Stay tuned to find out. I'm Charles Bochel, back once, ago, once again solo on commentary, this time joined by Samuli Kumo running our virtual production. So uh, we're going to take a look at the current uh, qualifying standings, but as of now, nobody has set a clean lap, which is uh, often the case here at the Nord's Life. So let's go ahead and take a look at our championship standings, starting with uh, spec one, Dudu Castro. Oh, I think that is from last season, if I am not mistaken. So it doesn't look like we have, uh, see if get Samuli can uh, right that ship real quick. Take a quick pick. Uh, as we'll, uh, as we, uh, as Samuli is working to uh, get those current standings up for us, we'll take a look at our drive. We've got Phil Barry on the track uh, coming through uh, a section of track. And I'm sorry, I will not be able to name all 75 corners as we uh, are continuing on here but we'll uh, we'll br we'll break out the points here it's pretty obvious when you get to some of these corners if you're familiar with the north life these are going to look uh pretty familiar to you as we're seeing phil berry who is uh just behind i'm trying to see who that is can't really pick the pick the number out as ready to start climbing the mountain here so we'll be coming up uh, through um, uh, Kessichen here just in a moment so a little car off the track there making that climb at the 11 kilometer mark uh, starting to climb the mountain. This is just a massive track, uh, so it's going to be 
uh, it'll be once the uh, race starts, there'll be plenty of action. The cars will be very, very close together. Uh, and we still won't be able to tell you all the track, all the corner names, but we're going to do our best to at least pick out some of them that we know. We switch over. There's our uh, colleague Josh Wilkie. This is what we would call Bravery Corner. It's just flat for these cars. Not really, uh, not really a lot of uh, drama involved in that. When you're in the faster cars, that becomes a little bit, uh, a little scarier, a little hairier. as we're uh, working to get the uh, standings. We'll see if we can get those pulled up for you here in just a moment. As we're coming through the carousel, we're about 12 and a half minutes into our qualifying. So because this is such a long track, this is about, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight minutes for these cars. Uh, it is, uh, you basically only get really three shots at this. Uh, you know, these, uh, the 20 minute qualifying session will carry over and, uh, the cars that are still out on the hot lap will be able to complete the laps, which means that, uh, this race will run, uh, very long as we're seeing now seeing Panero coming through uh, the carousel. Uh, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes with, um, as we continue forward, Let's see if we can get anybody to set a good lap time here for us and we'll, uh, We'll be able to tell you if we've got a pole setter or not, and uh, I, and then we'll if not, then we'll figure out how the uh, how the um, the standings are going to be set. Normally, it's based on our rating, I think, for these uh, for these events. So if you don't set a time, the uh, the higher our rated drivers start toward the front. Let's just say, about to say Marco Panera going through the technical section there, but this is this entire circuit's technical. It's one of the most difficult uh, tracks. Uh, it just, you know, if you've ever um, if you've ever driven any of the sims, and you've driven this, it just it takes just a long time just to learn it to get a feel for how the uh, how the car is going to react over the curbs, uh, knowing where the corners are and what sequence you're going to have to make all these moves, and then when you add, start adding a uh, cars here as we get ready to get to the uh, jump, which I don't think is a jump at all for these cars. I don't think they carry enough speed through there to even to get maybe the slightest little bit of air. They will get light through there, so that'll be a worry if you're uh, battling with somebody too wide going through that section, having to make sure that you have the car under control. See Jason Green heading down the dotting your home, which is the uh, the final long straightaway. Uh, as you're seeing, passing the uh, tourist entrance to the track. So if you ever get a chance to go over there and take a lap, uh, you'll come out into that section of the track there uh, to get you a good start for your lap. And um, it's, it'll be very interesting because uh, I'm going to be there for the 24 hours this year. So. I'm looking forward to at least seeing the track, whether or not I'm gonna get on the track is a different story. We'll let the professionals handle it, and I'll just kind of watch. Tear garden. And then the final quarter to finish off the lap. We have about four minutes left, and Jason Green does set a time, 747.93. So that's our first time on the board. So that puts him on pole as we see other cars working their way through. We got, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Yangshi Lin uh, now takes over, 745.9. Andres Bertoni, 743, which is odd. Andres doesn't really qualify. He decided today was going to be a good day to do it, so he's going to, instead of going from back to front, he's going to try and start at the front and just stay there. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. Alice Pleva, uh, Marco Panero up there in P2 now. Uh, knocks knocks you down a, um, a position down to P3. Playva Green Barry is our current uh, spec two pole sitter. Uh, Chris Murakami now on P8 overall has uh, taken the master's pole, uh, seven seconds off the pace. As these cars will go for one more flying lap.
All right. So I have I have uh, captured the uh, the overall championship standings, and we'll see if we can keep up and figure out who's in what classes. Uh, Abando Dantas is now leading the championship uh, with 193 points. Uh, Joao Tabino is in second. Bobby West in third. Jason Green in fourth. Jeff Jacobson in fifth. Uh, Gardini in sixth, Favini seventh, Jeff Fritcher, uh, who is in the master's class. We did verify that. So he did get the master's class win last week, uh, is leading the master's class PA overall. Brad Gould is in P9. Simon Mayer, I believe, is, is in P10, but I believe he's also spec two. I think he is the first spec two driver that I see on here. So he will be leading the uh, spec two class. We've got those as we're uh, trying to get to the end of the qualifying here. We've got about a minute and a half left, which is really irrelevant because it's going to be when everybody gets around um, to finish their laps off. Uh, as we see Antonio Race coming through Tier Garden, finishing off his lap, see what his lap time is. If he sets one, he does, and that puts him up in P11 and on pole for the Masters class. Uh, Clement is, uh, Lucas Clement is now moved up into P1 in Spec 2, along with Phil Berry in P2 in Spec 2, P8 and 9 respectively in the overall. So currently we have Bertoni, uh, Lou, and Panero, your top three in, in Spec 1. Clement Berry, and I believe make sure checking my timing and score in here. I, and I believe Josh Wilkie, our our good friend Josh Wilkie, is in P15 and puts him in P3 in spec two. And then we've got Race Burkett and Murakami as your master's class uh top three. As uh you see Evando Dantas coming around, going through Otson back. Wayne Buttermore down on the Dottinger, finishing off his lap as the 20 minutes have expired. So this will be Buttermore's last lap. This is the, I guess, the fastest part of the racetrack because it's such a long straightaway. And you can't call it really the back straight because there's really not anything that compares to it on the rest of the circuit. This is working his way through Tier Garden here, the final couple of corners. And does he set a time? He does not. So he had an off track somewhere, uh, which uh, obviously invalidated his lap time. As we see Jason Green coming through. Coming down. It's a very uh, twisty section here. Flats Garden. This is the name of that before. Could be wrong. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm getting these names wrong. Switch over now to Sean Campbell. Here, the mini carousel. 
a couple of corners and then we'll be on the back straight. We'll be able to finish off this lap. Cathcart coming around. Well, this is Brendan Cathcart, so I'm gonna guess uh, maybe <laughs> maybe a relation to to Brad, uh, another Aussie. So uh, good morning, Brendan. Up early. Did Dudu Castro coming down uh, down Dottinger, winding up his final lap. Makes his way through Tier Garden. The final kilometer of the course. Is anybody going to be able to go? Oh, Castro up to P7. So, so far, nobody able to pip Bertoni off pole. See a little uh, Jeff Fritcher and the 46 car. at the time that puts him up on pole for Masters, P13 overall. Getting some instructions from uh, somebody in the driver chat and they asking the uh, drivers once they finish their laps to please stop and tow so we can kick over to the race server. And we can get the race going. Um, see, and looks like we're going to have about 45-ish cars that are going to be racing today. In the big group here with Maselli on the 260 car. Figure out who that is. That's Russ Telker. Thank you very much, Samuli. Let's see if Miss Ella can get up there and get to the top. Of the oh, he's coming into the pits. So obviously, was either not going to improve or uh, had an off track. See Jason Perry pull over <coughs> and park the car. Jackson coming around to finish. A good run by Paul Jackson, 27th. Umberto Pellegrini jumps up to 24, 752.9. See Claudio Gardini, that was switched over to Pedro Carvalho who uh, won our spec two uh, in the Formula Ford earlier. If you if you missed that race, it was a pretty good race at Okayama. No rain, but still lots of action as we see Kramer coming down the uh, Nottinger for his uh, the end of his lap. at the time. Oh, P10. Great lap. That puts him on pole for spec two. Uh, two tenths of a second faster than Barry over a 14-mile over a, uh, lap. Very, very close close action there. He just as comes in with a P26. Claudio Garbini coming around. Should be at the very end of uh, the, um, the last of the cars coming around. It can set lap times. Fontas. To jumps up to P10, pushes Kramer down a position. 
Uh, so our top 10 dominated by spec one, uh, as what you would expect. Uh, Bertoni, Lou, and Panero, I think that is the last car. So now we can get started here and we can get our starting lineups pulled up just as soon as that's available for us. have one car still on track. I believe that is Antonio Race. And I believe that is it for him. So I think that is qualifying done. And now as we wait and get our starting grid, I think this is going to be a fairly short, uh, fairly short lap, or a short out lap, or in lap, I should say. Several cars that uh, did not set qualifying times. We do have Andres Bertoni, who will be starting on, on pole. Uh, Ziao Lu, uh, P2, Marco Panero in P3, Sean Campbell, P4, uh, Alice Pleva, Joao Tabino, uh, is on row three, Young Shilun, Jason Green, row four, Duda Castro, Navando Dantas on row five. Trent Kramer, Kane Lasky on row six, Simon Mayer, Phil Berry on row seven, Jeff Jacobson and Lucas Clement, row eight. Jeff Fritcher, Chris Murakami, All Masters row, row nine. Uh, and then another All Masters row, Antonio Race and Marcus Burkett. And that is your top 20. Brad Cathcart, Jason Perry, uh, row 11. Claudio Gardini, Josh Wilkie, row 12. Brendan Cathcart and Kevin Zhu, uh, row 13. And Alberto Pellegrini, Josh Justice, uh, row 14. Kim Batley and Sean Vincent, uh, row 15. Still waiting for qualifying to be officially over. There we go. All right. As we see the starting lineups, we, as I said, Bartoni and Lou, row one. Panero Campbell, row two, Playbo Tobino, row three, Lynn Green, row four, Castro Dantas, row five, Trent Kramer, row, uh, and Kane Lasky, row six, Simon Mayer, Phil Berry, row seven, Jacobson Clement, row eight, Richard Murakami, row nine, Antonio Race, Marcus Burkett, row 10, Brad Cathcart, Jason Perry, row 11, Claudio Gardini, Josh Wilkie, row 12. Brendan Cathcart and Kevin Zhu, uh, row 13. And Alberto Pellegrini, Josh Justice, row 14. Ken Batley, Sean Vincent, row 15. And your top 30, Luke uh, Welterbreden in uh, P31. Paul Jackson, 32nd. Tom Gradwell, 33rd. And then the drivers who are unable to set times, Maurizio Nacelli, Brandon Roseborough, and Alan McCain rounds out your top eight, or, uh, row 18. Wilson Bruzerosco, Pedro Carvalho, row 19. Yu Simpkins, Gary Wolbolt, row 20. Gianni Longan, Wayne Buttermore, row 21. Russ Telker, Carl Burke, row 22. Michelle Vaglini, Michael McConnell, row 23. And then shotgunning the field, Colin Flynn, uh, P47, and so and by himself on row 24. And that is your starting lineups. As we get ready here, we are starting, as I spoke, on the Dottinger, right at the uh, tourist entrance to the uh, to the circuit. Bertoni, with the rare qualifying time, uh, to to lead us off and start on pole. As the Porsche pace car starts rolling, heading down toward the start finish line. That will uh, say newer drivers up near the front. Uh, Lou and Campbell, uh, along with uh, some regulars, Bertoni, Panero, Playa, Tabino, Yoshi Lynn, Jason Green. So, interesting dynamic up in the front of the field. 
uh, with uh, some drivers that may not obviously are quite good uh, or you wouldn't be setting fast lap times at Nürburgring uh, but maybe not uh, necessarily used to driving with this group of racers so we'll see how that all plays out as we go through tier guard here and to start our start our uh, race 40 minute race uh, fuel strategy is, is pretty straightforward uh, i think it's going to be about five laps so it's uh you come in on lap two or lap three and that's that's your fuel strat to be able to how you want to do things as we see bertoni looks like he's uh getting ready and he is off and green flag and our race is starting so we'll keep an eye on the uh, pack and see if they get lined up single file or if we have any issues as we come down through Hotzenbach. that looks like lou actually got the jump so i don't know if he started uh before bertoni if he crossed the start finish line before bertoni he will be a black flag for jumping the start so we'll see how all that plays out as well as we got Lou Bertoni, Panero, Campbell playing with your top five. So we're working our way through the uh, these little section of S's here. Right, so our first little run as we make it down to flute plots. So as long as it's in the GT3 car, that's where basically you're getting a lot of air. As we see it right here, going to the little blocker hood. Which is another straightaway as we see a car off. That's Kane Lasky. Manages to recover, get back on track, and buy some momentum. So he'll probably lose a couple of spots there as we go down into Sweden Kreutz. Campbell with a big run up to P2. Passing Bertoni. Get through Ehrenberg. So far, so good. So far, so I'm not seeing any cars. We see McConnell and Flynn did not take the start of the race. So we only have 45 cars on track. Uh, but so far, it doesn't like we've had some movers and shakers, but no, no incidents as of yet. So that's a good start to this race. As we did kind of through uh, Foxhole into Out and Out Forest. Along here with Jeff Frencher. We see uh, Lasky just ahead of him. And we see a little side by side there. Oh, and a little spin. And that's Jacobson around. Wisely just pulls off the track, kind of runs up against the barrier. But very smart play by his part to just get out of the way. Uh, and so Lasky and uh, will continue on. But that was a very difficult set of circumstances for those two drivers. Uh, it's a very difficult place to go side by side, much less try and make any passes. On board here with Alan McCain. Currently running in 37, so he's got a little bit of work to do, but plenty of time to do it. He's down one spot, so he's just kind of, uh, you know, riding around at this point in time, not really uh, doing anything, trying to get settled into this track. Uh, once again, these cars, cold tires, uh, will be um, be a little bit of a challenge as we see some fighting up in front. Brandon Roseboro. Side-by-side -side action with Welter Redden. Get the line back up. As we see, Welker Redden looks like he's got a good run. They work their way back up the mountain. By side, very touchy through there. These cars obviously very flat, but this is a good, a good place for these cars once they get down to the, uh, down to this, uh, not really a straightaway, but a very open section of track. Uh, these cars obviously we talk about their draft. Uh, they draft very well, so you can make up a, quite a bit of time just behind the car. You know, maybe half a second or so as they're working their way through. You have to be very careful of the cars around. Uh, it's still, you know, you can get too wide, but anything beyond that may be a lot of work as we work in our way through. Uh, Lou's still up in front. Uh, in first place, Campbell, Panero, Bertani playing with your top five. And with 
pair of new Sitkins. A little bit of a battle there with the uh, 909 car of Gradwell. Like Gradwell's already been in the wars a little bit, a little rear end damage, uh, which probably is from the very start of the race. Oh, big wreck up front. That's Josh Wilkie. Oh, Josh, what happened? Uh, we'll, I'm sure some of them get some replays. They're still wrecking. This is a bad thing about these, uh, about this. See Ken Batley reversing around, trying to get reset. Uh, just no place to go. Cars, uh, not a lot of runoff area here. And so cars kick back on the track quite a bit. You see them going through the carousel there. Some of them missed it as we see Wilkie towing back to the pits. Kath Hart there looks like he's got the front end of the car missing. That's going to make things a little rough, especially when you're battling with other drivers. Good job just to hang on to that as some of these got the replay spooled up. And we'll see. Really hard battling through there. See some cars getting off in the grass. Just, I couldn't tell if maybe there was a little, you know, the, the pink car there uh, got lost the car, spun, not sure if there was any contact, and then just no place for Wilkie to go and just got collected as we see cars crabbing down the down, down through this section of track, I mean, badly. So Josh doing well just to uh, pull up, stay out of the carousel, maybe spun it again. Thought I heard a little tire squealing. Yep, I think so and wisely tows it back to the pits just to get out of the way. Back on board the cast park, switch over to Lou up in front. He's got uh, 0.6 of a second behind uh, to Campbell. Uh, and Panero's there, Bertoni there. Plava's back another second and a half or so. And he's got Tobino Lynn with him. So as we see the 160 of Jason Green uh, taking it through the green stuff, uh, gets it back on track safely. Maybe drops a position down to P12. As we see another spin, that's Nacelli. I'm sure was trying to work his way up through the field after not setting a qualifying time. And I think Wolbolt is off as well. Can't really see him from that camber angle. And we got Wayne Buttermore there as they're working their way through this section of track. Bruzerosco also. Uh, Little front end damage, so he'll have to carry that or pit twice. So we'll see how that all works out as we see the run down the dotting or hoe. Uh, too wide. Obviously, these cars, you know, you'll see these drivers probably bump drafting down through here if they can. So you see it kind of in the background there. I think that was uh, Phil Berry, Kramer, others just, you know, trying to keep the cars tight together, maximize their pace. You see them too wide on the inside. I'm sorry, uh, bump drafting there on the inside. That's Panero and Bertoni side by side through Tear Garden. Panero gets the advantage and takes the lead. As we see the 153 car there of Lou working his way to the inside. He gets uh, even with Bertoni. Bertoni will have the advantage coming in on the inside and is able to take that position back. And Campbell as well gets that spot over Lou. So now Panero, Bertoni, Campbell, Lou, and Tobino. Uh, Lynn and Plava. Uh, Plava's dropped down a couple positions down to P7. Kramer up to P9, having a good run thus far. Uh, Dantas, Greenberry, your top 12. So still several, uh, several little bunches of cars on track. Uh, and, and within each of those bunches, they're still battling for position as we are on lap two now. So it'll be um, at the end of this lap, we'll see who's gonna pit this time or who will pit next time. See Jeff Fritcher there, currently leading in the Masters uh, class, P15 overall. He has uh, Reese and Mark Common just behind him on track, uh, but a couple of second gap. You can see them coming through as well. Richard having a good run thus far. He's up two positions. Uh, Race is up three positions. Our high mover so far, Brandon Roseboro, it looks like, is up 13, along with Carvalho, up, also up 13. Have uh, several cars that have uh, been in the pits and um, are either uh, getting service or, or just done for the day. 
on board here with Jeff Jacobson. Having himself a nice little battle with Roseboro. Actually picked up that position over Roseboro, which drops him down to P23, only up 12 so far. Um, in the background there, Brandon Cathcart. Forest, you can see the lead group with Panero, Bertoni, Campbell, Lou, Tabino. Looks like Lynn and Plava have caught that group, so now we have a nice seven car train uh, going, working their way around the circuit. Coming down into the bottom, the bottom uh, lowest elevation portion of the circuit. I believe this little section is called Miss Hit Miss. Um, because of how you take, how you attack the uh, the apexes of those corners. See a position gain from Meyer in the background. He's up to 14. So very strategic here see how many of these uh, front groups, as long as they stay together uh, throughout the remainder of this lap, how many of them will pit this time. I'm sure somebody will take that chance. Uh, so it's a gamble anytime you pit a little earlier off strategy to compare to your, uh, your competitors, whether or not you can get the undercut and make it work. Uh, with a big grid like this, you're gonna come out in traffic it's not necessarily as fast as you, so this is going to be a very difficult proposition to uh, try and navigate traffic uh, on this circuit that you have to, you know, kind of maybe get held up by. So we'll see how it all plays out as we continue on. Lou moving up. We see the draft taking effect here. Lou moving up into P1. Uh, Tony tucks in behind him in P2. Monero back down to P3. Campbell and Tobino. Lou and Clava. So still some battles going on within this group, but it's pretty uh, it's, uh, pretty clean thus far. No real issues. So working their way up, getting ready to go through the carousel. See the second group just coming around in the background. There's about a Five second or so gap from Plova in P7 to Kramer in P8. Uh, Kramer has Castro, Dantas. Oh, that's what we see Phil Berry getting ejected from the carousel. So having to take the high line through there, which is a quite a bit slower. Um, so we'll drop back down to behind uh, Mayer in P in P14. Pellegrini in P21 as we look further down. It's got about a two second gap over Jacobson, uh, Roseboro, Cathcart, uh, just in the background there. Let's see Antonio Rice, looks like he's offline just a bit. And 201's gonna challenge him on the inside. And then not so much. And Antonio's able to hang on to that position for the time being. Currently running in 16th. And it's Clement on the 201, uh, who is, uh, you know, looks like P3 in spec two. So obviously he's got, he's, got a battle. he's not really in a battle with these, although every point matters. So you're finishing the points you receive will be based on your finishing position overall. Uh, so while it's not an in-class battle, it is still a battle for those points on track. Chris Murakami there. Running P19, he's in this group. Uh, just trying to hang on to the back of Gardini. Uh, Murakami is in third in the Masters class. He does have a race at the front of that little group. And we see Burkett just behind, uh, who is just outside the podium positions. So the Welsh Dragon uh, working his way around the Nord's life.
and up through uh, Schwabin Schwartz, working their way into the mini carousel. And here's the battle up front. You see, it looks like Bertani way on the right hand side. Manages to find a hole, tucked back in behind Lou. Looks like they're not really content to do too much passing as we see Panero move way to the outside. As, uh, good run there by Tobino to take the overall lead. He had a monster run behind those cars and just was able to catapult himself up to the front. And now we have Lou Bertoni right behind. Panero still hanging in there. Campbell, Lynn Pleba. So we got any takers for pits as we go through Cheer Garden. And nope, looks like everybody's going to stay in it. So the seven car train will stay around. Gap has now grown up to about seven seconds back to Castro, who is now taken over in P8 from Kramer. Stairs Kramer crossed over the pit exit line. So you see the pit, pit exit uh, graphics flash up on the SDK software. Kramer currently, currently, uh, so I'm going to say Kramer is uh, is now no longer spec two, or he's now spec one. So he's not overall and not the class is all the, the first 12 cars are all uh, spec one drivers. Uh, Fritcher is the first. Oh, as we see a spin there, is that Kramer? It is indeed. Trent Kramer just loops the car around coming through, um, coming out of Hotzenbach. So he's dropped several positions and a little, lost a little bit of time. So they work to get back up, climb on the back of that next group uh, that contained uh, Barry and um, Mayer and Fritcher. So he lost about three seconds to the group he was, uh, he was racing with. So he's kind of slotted back down to the next pack of cars. Running pit 15th overall, so we move up to Jeff Fritcher. And with a side by side battle, him in uh, the five car, which is Mayor. Come into Ehrenberg. This group is uh, battling. They are, oh, is that, is that Kramer again in the background? I couldn't tell if that was him or not, but somebody, somebody definitely spun back there. Could not quite catch it. If it was Kramer, he's obviously, you can see, he's lost a little more time to that group. See Race and Clement still battling up at the front of that pack. That's our next little pack of cars, five deep. Uh, Race, Clement, Murakami, Gardini, and Burkett. looking really racy. Looks like he's trying to get around uh, Antonio, but can't really find a way just yet. And this group of cars is about 20 seconds behind the overall race leader. So they're they're not out of it, but it's going to be hard work to try and catch back up. Um, obviously, no draft available. So it's going to be mistakes uh, during the pit cycle as we see race get really, really wide. Jump up on that tabletop curb. Uh, hang on to the car, but Clement does finally get around and uh, and race sees that position with Clement, P16 overall. Now race has Chris Burakami, his P2 and P3 in the Masters class directly behind him. See Burkett still back there in the background. That's P4 uh, in Masters. Yes. Buying this time. I wonder if anybody's doing any fuel savings while we're out here don't know that there's a really a lot of places on the nurse life to uh, be able to save fuel. As we are about 19 minutes into a 40 minute race. So I'm going to say most, if not all of the cars will be pitting as we come in at the end of lap three, at the end of this lap, as we see Jason Green, P11 has kind of dropped off the back of that group a little bit. So let's see if he can, is just a, enough of a, Toe there to be able to catch some of that time back up uh, through this uh, this uh, little bit straighter section as we see a car off. That's Antonio Race. Oh no, 
And also, I see Clement back there as well. But definitely, like I said, there was some contact involved between those two. Not really sure what happened. And Samuli's going to pull us up a replay. We see Clement in front and race behind. And just Clement just loses the rear of the car and no place for Antonio to go. Uh, taps him, spins him around a little bit. But Clement, no contact with the barrier. So it's just a matter of getting those tires pulled back off and should be able to make up some of that ground and hopefully have a quick pit stop and uh, get back to that group. As we're on board now with Roseboro. He has uh, Burkett just in front of him. A lot of those cars got checked up because of that spin. You see Murakami back there, uh, Gardini, Pellegrini, and then race on the end of that group. P16 back down to P22. So nice pack of cars. These cars are within draft range. So as they get on the faster parts of the track, those gaps will tighten up. As we look up to the front, and Tabino is still up in the lead. Bertoni's in second, Lynn in third, Lou in fourth, Panero fifth, Campbell sixth, Flava seventh. That is your lead pack. Jeff Fritcher there. Simon Mayer still, that's in P12, P13. Has uh, Phil Berry in tow, just behind, in the uh, World War II inspired uh, movie. See Kramer just off of that group back there, about a second and a half behind. Just don't think he's in range yet. Maybe he can make up a little bit of that time and get back in the draft range of these cars. So when he get back on the dotting earth, they can uh, he can really really start making up some some of that gap. <clears throat> Be back on board with the front group. It's Tabino, Bertoni, Lynn, Lou, Panero, Campbell, Plava. And the top seven all still together as they're working their way through the mini carousel. Then those couple of corners to take us over to the dotting of hope that long straightaway. And we'll see uh, see if there's any uh, shuffling of the order or if they're just all content to uh, to uh, stay together. And looks like that uh, just kind of watching timing and scoring here to see if my math is right. We're going to have five laps or six. So we'll, we'll know a little better once we get up to the start finish line. Bertoni makes that move to the right side of the track. And we have, um, looks like Lynn going with him. Lou's also there. Lou with a strong move, gets that draft, puts it to work, comes up through the middle, takes the lead. You see him now three wide coming down Dottinger. Looks like they're trying to make it four wide. And the track's wide, I don't think it's that wide. I'm not sure that's gonna work. We see him now, <laughs> three wide, two deep. Now back to uh, 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 less crazy, two wide. We get ready to come into pit entry. Any takers this time through your party? Yep, there's Bertoni stays out. Looks like Lynn stays out. The rest of that group, the other five come in. See Castro coming in as well along with Dantas, Tabino. Oh, as we have a spin, there's Murakami. I believe that's uh, Claudio Gardini. Not sure what happened there as they're coming through Tiergarten, but that's always kind of a source of uh, drama. As cars are trying to line themselves up, especially on a, a, a pit entry, um, a pit entry lap. Just trying to get themselves in the right position, but obviously lots of damage to those two cars. Uh, and so they'll come in, they'll take their fast repair, but it's going to cost them a little bit of time. Obviously not be able to stay up on the, at proper speed and with spins. And we have uh, Panero out in front of the cars who have pitted. Has Lou in tow.
nice gap back to uh, Campbell in P5. A little further back to Bino and Pleva. So these got, these uh, drivers need to stay in line. The more they fight, the quicker that group is going to come back together. As we are on board now with Bertoni, just coming down into Foxhole. My apologies to my German friends because I called it Foxhole. Yoxulian in P2 through compression into Adnell Forest. See our group of runners there. These cars have all pitted. So the only cars that did not pit that time were our front two, Bertoni and Lynn. They're gonna stay out for the extra lap. The rest of the cars came in during the pit stop. The Trent Kramer now leading spec, I'm sorry, he's still spec one, not a mistake. Get that graphic updated. Uh, he is in P12. There's a group with him that includes uh, Simon Mayer, uh, Phil Berry, who is a Spec 2 driver uh, and is leading the uh, Spec 2 class. Jeff Fritcher uh, leading Masters in P15. And that is the group of cars that we're watching here. Tony out to a two second lead over Lynn up front. So that's a big gap. I don't know if maybe Lynn made a mistake somewhere, cost him some time. And we don't try and stretch the gaps in these cars that much. Oh, we see that. Oh, that's Kane Lasky with a spin. Definitely clobbered the, the barrier uh, off the track. Roseboro comes through. So he's already towed. So that is probably race done for Lasky. Uh, because the tone is going to be significant from, from, from there, a significant amount of time. We see now Lou has taken over P3 from Panero. About a three second gap back to Sean Campbell in P5. And then along with him is uh, Joao Tabino and Alice Pleva. That next group that made up that original seven. here with Antonio Race, currently um, Masters Class P2, 18th overall. Lucas Clement, we saw the the uh, the incident they had uh, with uh, Clement's, with the half spin and then no place for Antonio to go. Uh, they came in, took their pit stop, took their fast repairs, clean cars, back on the track. Trying to make up some time as we said, a car that was just, was uh, Pellegrini. <laughs> Uh, off the track sideways. Lost some momentum. Allows Race and Clement to get by. Looking to the left. Trying to make his way through this uh, long gets that good toe making his way up in front go through bravery corner here makes the pass gets that done and then race with the switch back tries to run the crossover he's going to be on the outside of the next corner and then outside of this corner so not able to make that overtake and just kind of tucks back in behind clement as they work their way to the carousel just behind uh, Jacobson. So on the foreground there, the 40 car. Has about a two second, two and a half second lead over this group. Uh, if they work together and they stay nose to tail, uh, they might be able to catch Jacobson uh, for that lot, for the uh, final lap as they work their way down uh, the uh, dotting her hose straight. Yeah, now up front has now backed down to one second as Lynn is able to make his way, make up some of that time. So that should get him a chance to uh, to 
tighten that gap up as they're working their way into Swab and Schwantz uh, and into the, um, into the mini carousel and for the run on the straightaway. And so we'll keep an eye on them as uh, they'll come in for their pit stop on this lap. And I believe, if I'm looking at this correct, we're coming up on the 30 minute mark. They're running 745 lap times approximately. I think that means that we're gonna have six laps in this race. So that'll be interesting and hope everybody's got enough fuel on board to make all that work. As we see on board with Yongshi Lin. See that gap tighten down, half second. There's a tenth. There's another tenth as it just keeps coming down. These cars draft so well. So now he should come up to the back of Bertoni and he's going to make the move around. Had a chance to maybe just bump draft with him and decided to say, you know what? I've just got a good run. I'm just going to move up to the front. And I'll give Bertoni a chance to return that favor. As you see the gap tightening back up, and we're almost touching. Oh, and there's a little bump. There's another as we'll start letting off the steam here and getting through tier garden so they'll be should be pitting this lap so we'll see what the gap is it looks like the the group behind has made up a couple of seconds on this lead group uh, just from the overall time and they're in now good entry there by bartoni comes up it's almost up to the uh almost up to the pumps there Coming around the final corner. And he is already on his way out, as well as Bertoni. We're going to come out right behind Lynn, or I'm sorry, behind Lou, and right in front of Panero. And so now the, the gang is back together. So now we have uh, at, at least uh, we have a nice four car battle up here in the front for what would be two laps left. Gontas on board with him, running in P9. That group is about, um, he's behind Castro. That group is in P8, 9, and 10, along with Jeff Green there. They're about 15 seconds back of the lead group. So, once again, not necessarily the, uh, not going to be difficult to make that time up as we see Josh Justice come into the pits. This is his second stop on the day. I'm not sure if he had a little incident on, uh, during during that lap or not. Felt like he needed to come in and uh, and uh, either um, or either he came in earlier and maybe just took his fast repair. Uh, Simpkins is in also. His stop. Oh, oh, oh not really sure that's uh, that's not going to be good. Not sure what's going on there with with Houston. Uh, kind of backed up, moved forward a few times, and so not sure if maybe he was outside the box and had to adjust himself to get the fast repair to take or not. As we're back on board with Simon Mayer, uh, running in P11. Got Jeff Butcher, uh, Masters class leader in tow. Um, Trent Kramer in 13th, Phil Berry leading spec two in 14th. That, this group is about 20 seconds behind the lead group. Working their way through Foxhole. And compression. And add now forced. Nice, nice bit of run by these guys. Running in line, trying to just maximize their laptops. See a group in front of him. Contain this is the group that we were seeing earlier. Uh, Castro, Green, and Dantas. Green has moved up. Dantas has dropped down a position. Once again, still they're about 16 seconds behind the overall leader. So the group up front now is uh, four cars, and there's a little bit of a split between them. We have Lou and Lynn running P1 and 2, and then about a little over a second back, we have Bertoni and Panero running in 3 and 4. Uh, and then Campbell is also joined that group, now running in P5. 
Then a little further back, about three seconds, you have uh, Joao Tabino. Uh, Alice Play was three, back, three further seconds back, running in P7. That was the original group that we had uh, together. And uh, if these guys decide they want to fight when they, as they're coming down these uh, straightaways, then those group will, that group will tighten back up. Campbell having himself a good race, running in fifth. Giving Panero quite a quite a good push up to this section. Gaps tumbling down. It's now down to nine tenths between this group of three and the lead group of two. As uh, Lou and Lynn still hanging on up there, there's about a four tenths per second gap, but that that gap has just evaporated. So now it's down to uh, it's almost a five car train again. And now it is outstanding driving by those guys work together and uh, maximize their pace coming up that uh, long drafting section of track so we see bertoni just kind of wiggling his car around a little bit trying to get everything set for the carousel it's about the halfway point of the lap so we'll be looking at uh, coming across the line for the last lap around the 42 43 minute mark just hope everybody's got enough fuel in as I said at the beginning of the race, that was an uh, issue with uh, Panero uh, the last time we were here a couple of seasons ago. So let's hope he's learned his lesson. Otherwise, he'll, you know, once the last lap, he'll just kind of drop off the pace. Ooh, Lou just everything, <laughs> everything on the track and then some off the track. Just trying to run just as hard as he can go trying to just expand that lead but it's going to be very difficult when you've got four cars behind uh with the pace that's pretty close to what you're running so it's going to be a difficult chore to just try and get away as soon as you get a you know half second gap or so you'll end up on a uh, you know nice drafty part of the track and then that time just evaporates as we are seeing here with bertoni looking around Still hanging in there. Gap has just evaporated as all these cars are just not tail at this point. As they're working their way around, getting ready to go through the mini carousel. There's final two corners, the right handers before we get on the straightaway. And it may be, you know, pretty wide. Right. <laughs> as uh, before we get down to the end of the dotting area, as we see, oh, that's Kramer. Who was that that was with him? I see that what the other car was. That was the 32 car of Evandro Dantas. So side by side, just didn't work out for those two guys. Kramer gets the worst end of it, slams into the barrier, at least side swipes it as we're back to the front with Lou in the uh, 153 car as they start working their way. Looks like they're gonna go around this. Lynn and Bertoni and Campbell trying to go make it three wide. So that's Campbell up to third, Lynn up to first, Bertoni second. Drops Lou all the way down to P4. Panero is just content to just stay there in P5. Or is he? It's like Lynn, or so Lou wants to uh, make that comeback. So now it's too wide, too deep coming through into Tear Garden. With the, tighten, the tightening of the track, be very careful through here. Lynn and Lou. Lynn manages to hang on. lap this should be the last lap yep the 39 minute mark so we have one to go and we'll see who uh it's just going to be a draft fest for the for the rest of this race between these drivers 
So it's whoever has the draft last is uh, going to come out on top for this. Uh, so it's just going to be a wait and see for the next eight minutes or so as they're navigating their way through Hotzenbach. William Lee, new second. Bartoni, third. Barry down the list up to, uh, oh no, and that's Panero off. Just lost the car, spun it into the barrier. Uh, that's his chances over. So we see Tobino come by. See Plevo back there in the background. 12, you know, it's a couple of seconds back from Panero. Got Phil Barry here as he's coming through Hotzenbach, uh, leading spec two, P10 overall. Fritcher leading Masters, spec uh, uh, leading Masters, P11 overall. And then we have uh, Mayer and Don Toss along with that group. Uh, Kramer has dropped off. His pace is now about three seconds. We're back up front, two wide. Oh, just still fighting. Don't you win for Tony, one and two. Lou and Campbell, three and four. That's the first uh, little uh, little juke uh, in this lap. He's had a nice good run through the Quiddlebacher. And uh, Lynn able to stay out front. Bertoni up to second. Lou in third. Campbell in fourth. It's now a four-car battle for the race win. Uh, and we'll see how continue on as they come through Foxhole and Compression in Adena Forest. Just feels like that there's about 17 more passes to be made before this uh, race is over amongst these four drivers. Uh, it's just, just anytime they get a good run, they're just trying to get as many positions as they can. And then the next run is, uh, you know, may end up losing, they may get, gain one and lose two uh, as we're coming down into the bottom of the section of the track, the lowest uh, elevation of the track. And then we're priming ourselves for that uh, nice straightaway back up the mountain. And we'll see the, the uh, moves that are going to get made there. Great driving by all these guys so far. Been very clean. I think there's a even I had a little damage earlier. I think I got cleaned up in the pit stop. much of the track and then and then some as they can see Bertoni looking and making that move to the inside trying to take a defensive line prevent that run from Lou behind Campbell's going to be in the best position here he's going to have a draft off the three cars in front we see them start spreading out as they're coming up this long, not quite straight, uh, coming up the mountain. See Bertoni taking the second line. Campbell coming with them. So we're going to be two by two. Coming through Bravery Corner. So just move, move over, try and just pinch Bertoni off just a bit. And they will make that pass. A little blink there from Campbell the, on my screen anyway. So Lou up to P2, Bertone down to three, Campbell in fourth, and then still out front. They're looking too wide again. Not quite enough momentum to make that pass. To get lined back up for uh, Carousel. Gap emerging between uh, Lynn and Lou. Uh, tighten back up here as we're working our way through some of these faster sections of track. In the time of screen, Barry has made his way back in front of Fritcher. 
And so the reversal of positions again. Perry P10 overall having a great run. Leading spec two. Richard leading masters P11 having also. These guys are just running their lines, running their race. Mayor and Dantas hanging along, hanging along with them. Kramer's still falling down. Looks like he's going to be falling into the clutches of Rosenborough, Pellegrini, and Jacobson here before, I'm sorry, at least Rosenborough. Uh, so those guys will probably end up seeing each other on the track here momentarily. Back up to our front group, Lynn Liu or Tony Campbell. Working our way up, getting ready to go through the mini carousel. Two of right handers to make that long run down the Dottinger Ho. As uh, we get racy here, maybe four wide before it's all said and done. See, Lynn Bertoni is just looking for the alternate line. You want to get lined up. Make sure you hit these apexes properly. Carry as much momentum as you can. You see Campbell lifting just a little bit there as he catches up to Bertoni. Who's he going to go with? He's going with Bertoni. They're going to go by Lou. Push him as hard as they can go. Bertoni trying to stay in the gap uh, or the draft of Lynn. Campbell maybe shoves him out just a little bit. Campbell with a big run. Lynn moves to the opposite side of the track. Campbell goes out to the front. Lou goes with him. It is three wide, and now it's four wide. As Lynn gets shuffled back, so he's going to get a bit of a draft again. As we see them going three wide, Bertoni, Campbell, uh, Lou, and Lynn just off the back. In that run down here into Tier Garden, still three wide going through Tier Garden. Oh no, three wide. Oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. So there's Lynn, Lou, Campbell, uh, Andres Bertoni state, skates through and is going to take this win. Campbell's going to finish second. Looks like Lou is going to finish third and Lynn fourth. See the battle coming in here between Green and Castro. Tavino fifth, play with sixth. Marco Panero in seventh. Castro Green. Oh, oh, sideways, but caught it. Let's your way on the outside there. Just get shuffled back. So it's going to be Mayor, Dantas, Barry, Fritcher. Uh, Barry getting the Spec 2 win. Fritcher getting the Masters win. Uh, Kramer in 14th. Cole Green, Jacobson, Roseborough in 15th. I'm sorry, Roseborough in 17th. Uh, race is going to get P2 in Masters. Here comes McCain getting P19 overall. And looks like it's going to be Burkett maybe getting yep there he is Burkett getting the final step on the uh, on the uh, Masters that is correct see the remainder of the cars coming through there's Chris Murakami 24th a little spin cost him uh, cost him a lot of uh, positions and a lot of time there on the track there'll be more cars rolling through. You can see Brad Cathcart. E26 overall. Along with uh, Vincent uh, Gradwell. Gary Wolbolt still coming through the course. Give us a couple minutes there, folks. We've still got several cars on the track. We'll try and get this done, but we've only got uh, just a few more. Johnny Longan uh, comes across in 29th. Paul Jackson looks like he's going to get uh, 30th. And 
And there we go. Done and dusted for, for Mr. Jackson. Wobolt, uh, looks like he's going to be 31st. He's coming down the dotting room. Joe Baglini, obviously not having the best day. Get to him just as he clobbers the Armco barrier there. Luke Welterbredden. Still quite a way yet to go before he can finish his lap. That Carl Burke. Looks like he's going to be 34th. Just kind of get those wrapped up. I think the last car on the track is uh, Russ Telker. There we go. In 35th, I think he'll be the last finisher. Uh, still has about uh, three tenths of a lap to go. So still a little ways yet to go before we can give you our final classifications. I am looking to see if we've got interviews. I don't see anybody in the interview uh, area just yet so we'll see if anybody shows up if they do we'll bring them in as these guys are finishing the race as we see the Glenny coming through out of tear garden making that final right hand corner to finish in p32 Walter Breden coming across the line, 33rd. Robert coming down the Dottinger. Russ Telker just a little bit behind him. So we'll have these last two, and I think that'll be the end of our end of our runners. Pretty interesting race. It was a lot of a uh, lot of drama. You know, not 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 used to seeing Andreas Bertoni uh, starting up front. He's normally our, uh, you know, we we commonly give him the uh, we call the hard charger award, the most positions gained, named in either his or uh, or uh, or David Gasper's honor, because they always start at the back. But obviously, uh, Andreas really enjoys driving this track, so got out there, put it up on the front, uh, started on on uh, on pole. Uh, finished in with a win, so great job by Mr. Bertoni. Uh, Sean Campbell, uh, fairly new to the series, but uh, obviously a very, very talented driver. Uh, gets P2, uh, Jiao Lu uh, finishing third. Yongshi Lin, a uh, longtime uh, SCCA racer, uh, finishing fourth, and Tabino with fifth. I see Telker coming down through Tier Garden for the final time. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, that's right. And uh, obviously, looks like he's got some uh, camber adjustments he made during the course of the race. And a little toe as well. So he's <laughs> bringing that car around uh, to finish up. And that should be our last runner, uh, P35. So now, on to our classified results. As uh, everybody, th everything gets uh, shifted over here. Andres Bertoni uh, with the win. Sean Campbell, P2. Yongshi Lin, P3. Tobino in fourth. Pleva in fifth. Marco Panero, sixth. Dudu Castro, seventh. Jason Green, eighth. Simon Mayer, ninth. Phil Berry, spec uh, two winner. Uh, P10 overall. Trenton Kramer, 11th. Jiao Lu in 12th. Alberto Pellegrini in 13th, Jeff Jacobs in 14th, Brandon Roseborough 15th, Antonio Race, I believe, uh, yeah, Antonio Race gets the uh, gets the win, and I can only surmise that Jeff Fritcher hit the incident limit, uh, which caused him a drive through and a 40 second penalty at the end of the race. So Alan McCain in 17th, Burkett in 18th, P2 in Masters, uh, Don Toss in 19th, Fritcher still ends up on the Masters podium in third. Uh, Pedro Carvalho gets uh, P2 in Spec 2 in 21st, Gardini 22nd, Brendan Cathcart 23rd, Chris Murkami in 24th, 
Josh Justice, I believe, is spec 2 P3 uh, in 25th, Brad Cathcart in 26th, Sean Vincent in 27th, Gradwell 28th, Gianni Long in 29th, Jackson in 30th, uh, Gary Wolbalt 31st, Bruiser Rusco in 32nd, Michelle Viglini 33rd, Luke Welkervredden in 34th, Carl Burke in 35th, Russ Telker in 36th, and that was all the cars that finished uh, on the lead lap. Josh Wilkie 37th, uh, Lucas Clement 38th, Wayne Buttermore 39th, Hugh Simpkins in 40th, Kane Lasky in 41st, Ken Batley 42nd, Jason Perry 43rd, Kevin Zhu in 44th, Maurizio Nicelli uh, 45th, and I believe Michael McConnell and Colin Flynn did not take the start of the race, and that is your 47 car grid. And I believe, uh, if I'm correct, we are way over time. So, so that'll be uh, no interviews today. But thank you for uh, tuning in uh, for Samuli Kumo and myself. Thanks very much for watching. Join us again next week as we go for another Sunday drive with the Weekend Warriors. Have a great week.